Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Holly Wright with me. Holly is a Columbia University trained executive coach who helps leaders find their authentic selves, improve their versatility, and use their strengths to build effective teams and add more value to their organization. Holly, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining. Let's get right into it. Question number one, Holly, why did you become a coach? Long story short, I became a coach because I wanted to learn how to ask better questions. I was facilitating small groups and I realized that I had a, a lacking skill that I needed to build. And so that kind of began my journey to learn how to ask better questions. And that led me to coaching. I love it. I love it. I love it. Always good to, you always get better answers when you're asking the right questions. <laughs> Question number two, speaking of questions, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? I think one thing that might set me apart from other coaches is that I tend to lead my coaching engagements by doing a values clarification and really focus on values-based coaching and values-based leadership. So understanding what the client's core values are, how they play into decision making for them, and how it affects their overall daily interactions, basically, and how to find more fulfill fulfillment by leading from and living from their values. Great. Very, very important stuff. Question number three, Holly, what... Where sorry where do you find your clients <laughs> my clients tend to find me i think more so i contract with leadership development organizations and most of my work has done through coaching participants who are going through those programs i also have a personal practice when people reach out to me asking about my services for the most part um, but I, you know most of it's just kind of through conversations and through my network and getting to know people and it's just kind of an organic organic connection i think building relationships absolutely yeah very good. Very good. Question number four, Holly, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? I think that depends on the day. <laughs> it really does. Yesterday, my answer was completely different. You know, I think uh -huh. for a lot of coaches, you know, from and from my experience and from what I've heard from other coaches is, you know, finding the clients is always a challenge. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you connect with the people that are your ideal type of client that you can provide the most value for? Mm -hmm. But kind of, I guess this week, though, my challenge is, you know, when I'm coaching a lot of people, sometimes I, I coach, you know, six to eight people a day. Mm -hmm. And with that, my biggest challenge is having and now the same amount of energy, attention, focus, and empathy and everything else that goes along with coaching at the end of the day for my last client that I have for my first client at the beginning yeah. of the day and just making sure that I'm delivering, you know, that, that nice, consistent presence all across the board for each of my clients. Yeah. I know I, I said before we hit record that I in in this podcast, I don't usually ask follow up questions, but I am curious, what do you do then to help you maintain your, your energy and your focus so that you can, you know, deliver the same value to that 4 p.m. client as you do the 8 a.m. client? Yeah. Again, it kind of, you know, I hate to be vague or give, you know, just vague answers, but it really depends on the day. It depends on yeah. what I'm feeling in that moment. But I think overall exercise really helps just getting Good outside one. for that break, getting some fresh air. And I, I do a lot of meditation and mindfulness as well. And that really helps kind of reset my my energy but it also helps me understand what my energy level is where mm -hmm. i'm at in in that and how i might need to adjust also just being intentional at the beginning of the week at the mm -hmm. beginning of the day knowing what my day looks like ahead of time and mm -hmm. how i have to manage my energy throughout the day so I, I do have the same presence and energy for that that last client of the day that i do ahead of time and kind of setting boundaries you mm -hmm. know saying this is this is the cap. This is the most I'm willing to give in a day to make sure that I'm able to deliver for that last client as I am mm -hmm. for the first. Yeah, that's good. Cause you also have to deliver the next day as well. So you got to make sure exactly. you can, you know, it's not, you're not just doing a sprint, <laughs> you're doing a marathon as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Smart, smart. Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? I'd start earlier. 
I've, I've found my passion with coaching and something that I really am drawn to and I live for. And I, I'm kind of like addicted to the, the ripple effects that coaching creates. You know, I'm helping people uh, become their highest selves and, and be them their best selves and help their team become their best selves, helping their organization become the best that it can be. And just having, living a more fulfilled life, personal and work life, which has just amazing ripple effects. Mm -hmm. um, and that means a lot to me because I feel like it makes the world a better place for all of us to live in and, you know, my daughter and everything else. And I feel like I, you know, if I could do it all, all over again, I would just get started earlier because I'm loving this journey. Mm -hmm. But everything for a reason, you know, Every, everything, life happens us, to us yep. for a reason and life leads us to where we need to be. So I guess that moment was right. But if I had a choice, it would definitely be a start earlier. Love that. That's great. Now for the bonus question, what is one book that you recommend all your clients read? All of my clients read. That's hard. You know, because it's so you know, each conversation is tailored to that individual. And I can't mm -hmm. say I'd recommend one book for each person, but I'm currently reading Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. And it is just an amazing book that one. I haven't, yeah. And I have been recommending it to all my clients yep. as of late. And she, and I being like a values-based coach and, you know, working on values-based leadership, she touches a lot on leading a, you know, a values-based life. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's really resonating a lot with me and I'm finding a lot of connections with the leaders I'm coaching as well. So at, at this moment, as of today, that would be the one book I would recommend. I love that. That's a fantastic, I'll, I'll second that nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Holly Wright, that's, that's fantastic. So that kind of wraps up our questions. Is there anything that you would like to add or pitch or promote? And also if you would please let us know where our listeners can connect with you online. Absolutely. Yeah. For anyone who's interested in learning more about values-based leadership or just leading a values-based life, you can find me at rightpathcoaching.com, that right as my last name, W-R-I-G-H-T, Right Path Coaching, or just on LinkedIn. If you uh, type that into LinkedIn with my name, Holly Wright, I'm sure I'll pop up and I'm always happy to connect and answer questions. It doesn't have to be a formal connection or anything. If you're just kind of where, want to share some thoughts or ask some questions, I'm happy to make myself available. Perfect. Holly Wright, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. We'll see you all next time.